Beautiful humans, welcome back to another episode of the I Like Birds podcast. I'm your host, Zach Rippey, and this podcast is dedicated to the non-believers, the confused believers, and the true believers. Because I, at one time or another, was all three, and I'm here to help you get a better understanding of who Jesus is and what he's all about. Let's grow in our faith together. You learn as I learn. I like the Bible, and I like words, so therefore, I like birds. Let's start the show. My fellow birds, welcome back to another episode of the I Like Birds podcast. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm your host, Zach Rippey, and I got a real treat for you today. We actually have a guest on the podcast. Yes, I know. You're like probably thinking, when's the last time you had one of those? I couldn't even tell you. It's been that long. I think it was when Olivier and Mikey were here. Uh, And I'm, I'm, you know, it's been so long that I just found out that Zoom calls actually end after 40 minutes now. They used to just go as long as you wanted to go, but I guess everybody's trying to nickel and dime you these days. So uh, we we actually wrapped it up under the 40 minute mark, which is good because I feel like that means that uh, people have a more of an opportunity to listen to uh, all the way in its entirety. So that's always exciting stuff. Uh, Part of my voice, I've been a little bit under the weather. Uh, My kids got me sick and now I got a shortness of breath and uh, but luckily on the podcast, I don't do too much talking. It's more so Judah and it's just incredible the the discussions that we have. So, oh, I, I, <laughs> I literally just say, oh, it's Judah. You know, like, I don't even introduce y'all. Uh, but yeah, man, I've been talking about Judah for quite some time on this podcast. He was actually the person that got me my office space uh, when I was, you know, living in the RV in my in-laws backyard. I had a ne- I needed a place to go uh, record and get some writing done and all that stuff. And he was, you know, the first person I met and kind of set up the whole situation. And uh, we hit it off from the jump. We had like a two hour conversation about Jesus in like the office space room that same day. Uh, we're just talking about, you know, the ministry and just his passion for the Lord. And it was just so cool to be able to just, you know, feel like it was, you know, um, it was a, uh, the, like the hand of God was on that situation and it made me feel good about, you know, getting that first office space. And then we moved over to the church and then next thing you know, it's like, I realized I was about to have a home office. And, uh, so it was a, it was a cool little, little six month stint, um, you know, uh, getting to know Judah and, and he moved on right around the same time I moved on from the, from that spot. So anyway, that was a little bit long winded version of how I met Judah, but, uh, some of the things that he does in life, man, it's just incredible. His passion for the Lord is phenomenal. I, I admire it. He's so genuine. I love the the way he he speaks about the Lord. He's well spoken. That's why he's an executive pastor at the House of Joy Church in Oklahoma, and he's also a phenomenal worship leader. Him and his wife uh, do an incredible job on their um, their band is called Saints and Strings. You can find them on Spotify, Apple Music. Uh, they make very uh, you know obviously Christian music, but I even think you know it's uh, the kids like it as well. You know, which is really cool because then you know, you can put it on in the car and the kids will vibe to it. All right. So, uh, dancing with joy is one of my favorites. So go check that one out. If you guys enjoy the conversation with Judah. All right. So don't want to say too much on here, but I did want to just let everybody know. I've just truly been appreciating all the encouragement when it comes to just the pursuit of the pursuit I'm on right now. It just means the world to me. I just feel like so many people just been showing love to the videos and the episode and then the, the writing business that I've you know, really just been leaning into in this season and uh, the encouragement just means the world. So thank you so much for everybody doing that. And it was just so cool because I actually mentioned Judah on the last episode uh, in regards to um, the verse that he sent me about God providing and, and testing God to just keep pouring out the the blessings on you and whatnot. And um, that's kind of what led us into this conversation uh, as well, because I reached out to him because I was looking for some people uh, to, to make a little clip about what the gospel is, you know, cause I feel like so many times we hear, uh, what the gospel is, uh, as far as, you know, like, Oh, go spread the gospel, go, Oh, I, I do it for the gospel. They're like, this is the gospel, you know, but then again, it's like, you know, people say that, but what is the definition of it? You know? So I really wanted to have different perspectives and give different voices. Next thing you know, Judah sends me the most amazing clip and I'm like, all right, this is incredible. And he's like, yo, I'd love to be on the pod to talk about it more. So instead of playing the clip, we just had a great conversation about it that I want to share with you guys. And we kind of jump right into it as far as uh, right when he called, we just started talking about Jesus. I was like, I guess we're just going to press record here. And so you'll, you'll notice that you kind of missed a little bit of the context beforehand. But he was just kind of, you know, talking to me about how he listened to the last episode and it brought tears to his eyes because he just realized like the power of the Lord is just so powerful and just so the hand of God is just so strong and he really does be taking care of his people. And uh, it was just really cool to, because to, he's, he's seen a lot of the journey and a lot of the, 
the the fight to get into our first home and just trying to figure it out and all that stuff. And um, I've gave him some encouragement as well for him to take that leap of faith and go to Oklahoma, let him figure it out. You know, like I'm over here, like writing for a living and, and trying to figure that out. But it's like God providing and I'm still trying to write about Jesus in every way I possibly can. And uh, he just we, we both just, you know, we needed each other in that season of life. We got breakfast on more than one occasion uh, at Waffle House. We got lunch a few times together and stuff like that. So uh, it's an awesome relationship I built with him. And he's in Oklahoma now with his wife and family. So uh, keep them in your prayers and uh, go follow their their um, them on Instagram and, and everything that they're doing with the Saints and String Band and everything like that. So uh, go show some love, man. Appreciate you guys uh, tuning into this one. Specifically, do me a solid and share the episode once you're done. Uh, go check out the YouTube because I am going to post some clips up of me and Judah as well as the full video most likely. Uh, that takes a little bit while because I have um, a video guy editing it and everything like that. So uh, I wanted to drop the audio as soon as I can for the real birds out there that have been tuning in since the audio days, you know. So I uh, got to stay faithful to you guys as well. So appreciate it so much and enjoy the conversation. One way or another. So it's been it's been really cool um, to see the Lord show up like that. Just the same way you were sharing the testimony about the the dentist thing, man, like how things are coming in the exact amount. So mm -hmm. that's happening with you guys as well. Yeah, man. No, it, it, it is. Right, and, right, and right now, actually, the Lord just gave us. So so here's my, my prayer has been like, I know that the Lord is going to show up and, you know, so, so provide all my needs. But then now I want to get into that. What, what does the overflow life look like, though? Because, you know, we're supposed to be living an overflow. And I know that's the case. I know it's not on God's end. It's on my end. So I'm like, Lord, what does that look like? And he's been giving me vision on some businesses to start up um, and, and for the church. So I, I'll give you an example. I have some people in the church who uh, who love cleaning. They want to do their own cleaning business. Like they just, these, they're older ladies who just love to clean, but they don't have the knowledge of starting the business. So I'm like, you know what? I'll take the risk. I'll start the business and I'll send those Holy Ghost filled ladies to go clean. And that business is bound to be prosperous. You know what I mean? So, and it's going to increase the church too. And then there's a guy who sells cars on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist, but he doesn't really understand, or he, he doesn't like the phone. He hates phones. He, you know, he doesn't mm -hmm. like technology. So I'm like, hey, let me do the technology part. I'll take a small cut and we'll like run this together. So I'm like seeing it's building the church. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's building the people in our church. They're, they're it's going to prosper their businesses. And then it's going to, um, anyways, it's, it's just going to bless us in every way because that, that's how the Lord showed me that we're going to infiltrate this city is through the marketplace through having the workers who are going to show up, who are going to go all out, work for the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's going to be our evangelism in the city. So anyways, Bro, I love yeah. that because let me share this with you because I actually, um, I was just in the process of editing one of my chapters uh, in this last week or so. And I reread something that I wrote and I was in the editing process, of course. And um, one of my uh, spiritual leaders here in town named Lisa Schwartz, uh, she talks so much emphatically about how, taking back the kingdom is going to be done economically and in the business yeah. world, because for so long, we just didn't have those seats and we gave those seats to the other side. And the next yeah. thing you know, they started just uh, abusing it and they started, you know, greed became more of a thing and uh, corruption became more of a thing, money printing and all this stuff just kind of escalated. So it's like, it's on, I think, you know, she really speaks into the, the mindset of prosperity. And and like I shared with uh, the listeners on the last episode, uh, you really kind of poured into me with that kind of that those back and forth DMs because it kind of you kind of gave me permission to like trust God and financially yeah, yeah. Essentially, the insurance you know I mean? policy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And um, and just hearing that your your hand is just moving so much and kind of like an entrepreneur business side of things um, coming from where you came from. We met. Uh, I don't know if people know this. We met through. Uh, you were kind of like my landlord at my last yeah. uh, in yeah. my in my first office space, and you you rec made great recommendations as far as um, the room to have and all this stuff, and uh, we just poured into each other big time uh, about Christ from the moment we jumped into convo with each other. And oh, I mean, our first meeting was like two hours. Yeah, I know, yeah. dude. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, yeah. That and was it, awesome. It was super cool, and um, it's just so cool to see that like you took a leap of faith going to Oklahoma, and uh, sure. like you took a leap of faith going down there with. I don't even think you had really a, jo a job lined up, correct? No job. And we spent basically our, all of our savings to get that camper and cash. You know, I heard your story about buying the RV. You would share that with me that day that we met. Mm -hmm. And it was so crazy. I was in the process of praying, Lord, should I? Because the Lord told me to get out of debt. And, and I was seeing in this season, this is a specific word for me. Rent for my apartment complex was debt. Mm -hmm. um, and I say like 
there renting it from, from people is a good thing. I'm not saying like this is a blanket statement for every Christian or anything. Right. No, but no, absolutely. but for, for me in that, the Lord showed me that I was in debt in that way because I was I was wanting to get out of debt. And, and by the way, debt's not a sin. I'm going to I'll go in and start with that. Debt is just a weight. And I really wanted to get out of that mm-hmm. weight so I can fulfill my calling. It, it was really going to help me. And it was mm-hmm. going to be a testimony to people. But then when you shared your testimony about going with three years, you said on the road, I think uh, in the uh, RV. No, I went on the road. I only went on the road for about four months, but we planned to do it for a year. And then we kind of came back, but we we left with no job either. You know, we just kind of pulled the trigger. Yeah. And you said you came back with more money than you had. Like the Lord just showed Mm -hmm. up in a a huge way. Like, and that's, that, that was, how it was for us. We spent our savings, our whole, all of our savings for our wedding and everything to do that, you know, and, Mm -hmm. and, um, and to come to Oklahoma, live on my brother's property. And now we're in our own house, right? As the day that we were in the delivery room, having our baby, Literally, the Lord showed up with like, hey, we have a house for you. Um, wow. And and we are paying it off. It wasn't like a, a bought and cash thing. So we are, in, like I said, also in a sense of debt. But at least this debt is not rent going out the, the door, you know, every equity. every month. Yeah. And we're putting equity in something right away. And it's with, by the way, even if if you would say like, okay, well, the borrower is slave to the lender. I'm actually happy because of the slave and the, my, my master, in a sense, is actually my pastor and my brother rather than like the bank. You know what I mean? Right. So, so the Lord was showing me like I'm humbling myself big time on mm-hmm. um, having to trust the person who's bu- selling me the house. But I really wanted, as a dad and as a husband, as a new dad, to get mm-hmm. my wife a comfortable living situation with the first baby. I Absolutely. mean, you know what I mean? Like, like the Lord really <laughs> answered that. I could testify <laughs> to that, dude. Yeah, we were. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we were in I the know, R- yeah. RV until the last like, two, actually two weeks in. Um, Zeke was born for already two weeks and we were still in the RV. Uh, luckily we had my in-laws um, awesome house to to stay at uh, until yeah. our house was ready. But um, it was a, a, a huge test and a huge fight to try to get into our first home as well. But the Lord, you know, was the one that kind of made it happen. And uh, ironically, we moved in on Easter weekend and I was like, okay, God, like I see what you're doing here, you know? So yeah, that's um, awesome, man. Yeah, now, man it, Having a baby is, is it's uh this is what the Lord told me actually about us having a baby is that this is where your faith is going to really matter. Mm. That's what he told me. Cause you know what? Like, even if my That's faith true. didn't work, let's say if I was sick or something and I was not feeling well and I, you know, had all the faith to, for it to be healed. And even if it didn't work, if I actually didn't have that faith. So what I'm tough, I can be sick and still go to work. Like I, I you know what I mean? I, I can do all that. I'll, I'll get over it. But then when you have like a little one, a baby who you're responsible for, this is like what the Lord was telling me. This is where your faith is going. And not in a condemning way. Like, you know, when the Lord talks to you, it's never like a, this is where your faith has to matter. It is nothing like that. It's just like, wow, how much more of a testimony now uh, will, yeah. will our faith be when we're actually, when it's someone else's life that we're responsible for. And, um, and by the way, we've had such a healthy, happy baby, like all the things you hear about, like having a baby in the beginning, how hard it's going to be. It just hasn't been that, yeah. which I'm blessed. You know, I'm not, yeah. I'm not taking it for granted. <laughs> that's amazing, bro. Congratulations to you and your wife. And that just shows that, you know, yeah. God's going to take care of his people. And and as yeah. we we're kind of discussing, it's like um, he wants to honor those who honor him. And especially in the times that we're living in, I was having a conversation with my buddy the other day about this, as far as like, there's so there's such like a spiritual war that's been taking place over these last couple of years that it really feels as if, you know, like, I feel like God's almost pouring more into his, his children right now, because those that are rocking with him are rocking with him during these times. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And to the point of where it's like, they're actually being tested. We're actually being persecuted. We're actually, you know, not to the level of extent that, you know, China, you know, Christians are going through, of course, in yeah. America and whatnot, Honors. but still there is a, a clear divide right now of good and evil, as far as, you know, um, people that believe in God and like live by his truth and like rock with him. And then, you know, either those that are lost or completely on the other side of uh, that are choosing to, you know, walk with, walk with the devil or just under or being blinded by the devil, you know, so you're spot on. Yeah. mm -hmm. So it's just a really interesting perspective to see, you know, the country as a whole right now, especially with the access of information and like the lens that we see the world. in now obviously it's being manipulated, of course, but still it shows that like, yo, we have the opportunity as Christians to be representing Christ in a really big way during these times. Yeah. Big time. I mean, you, you were kind of mentioning this on your last podcast in your last episode. Um, but Basically, there was a point in time in this country where just the the heart like to be to testify for Christ, all you had to do in a sense, which was a hard thing to do, I'm not taking it for granted, was just smile, have a smile on your face and laugh with people because you mm-hmm. literally had to cover your face up when you're working places. So being that person, mm-hmm. talk about being a light in a dark place. I'm talking literally just being the only person in an entire Walmart that's not wearing a mask, being able mm-hmm. to smile at people. 
that was showing people what Jesus was like. Like it was, mm-hmm. it wasn't like I had to go and, you know, preach the gospel and have a scripts ready for people. It, it was, it was nothing like, if I could just smile at someone, I'm going to change their entire day. Who knows? Maybe their life, you know, mm-hmm. like it, it actually, we, we reached that point in this country, which by the way, I really believe um, even though in China, that there's this obvious, like, Hey, you'll get beat for Christ for Christ. You'll, you'll go to jail. Um, like think it, there's, there's persecution in that way. What I found really interesting it, in America, there's this persecution where like a lot of people identify as Christian or like, you know, as a believer believes in God. There's a religious spirit, though, to where when you're when you're getting persecuted in America, it's a different kind of persecution. I'm not mm. saying like it's, you know, some people That's live true. really easy, happy, fat lives. I'm not, you know, um, yeah. what, what they're doing in China is actually beautiful. And I love that they're breaking the law for the for the gospel. Right. Mm-hmm. But then here you had people that were not want to break the law, right? Romans 13, don't break the law. Uh, don't go to church because that's against, you know, the governors, what they're saying. Right. And we're seeing those brothers in China who are like, and, in, and not just China, by the way, brothers all over the place that are mm-hmm. like, you know, willing to give up their life for this thing. And then we're over here, like getting really comfortable anyway. So there's a different kind of persecution because there's this religious spirit that just says, well, I'm a Christian. I'm good with God. I don't have to actually do anything. Mm-hmm. And, and it's, Anyways, so I've noticed that there's a different kind of persecution here. That actually propels me into my next thing that I wanted to talk about as far as um, because yeah. I asked a few different people that listen to the show to send me a little clip about what the gospel means. And that's what kind of led us to this episode. Yeah. And uh, I loved listening to what you had to say, especially the fact that you kind of honed in on the fact that, you know, it's even uh, digestible for children, which is a big thing, especially now that we're both fathers. But the thing that really stuck out to me the most about what you sent me was that understanding his grace is so important because <laughs> that is something that I feel like is lacking you know even in you know even in my own walk i feel like as well i feel like it's uh, one of those things that's a never ending pursuit of understanding the grace of god and i feel like once we're able to like start seeing just how graceful he is and how much um that is still rooted in our beliefs uh to the core of our beliefs as to like why the gospel is what it is i feel like that's that's how we have a better understanding and a more of a willingness to obey his commands would you agree with that oh absolutely and uh and you said like a willingness it's Man, grace is everything. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, let me let me park on that real quick, man. Grace is it is everything. And so you let me ask if you've heard this term. Have you heard the term like uh, cheap grace or like you know p- these preachers are preaching like something that's cheap? You know, where the license to sin grace. You know what I'm talking about? Kind of like water around? watered down watered down. Yeah, gospel? yeah, absolutely. exactly. You've heard that like hey, they're kind of using it as a license for them to go off sinning and whatnot. Correct, man. So the Apostle Paul, if, if you know, is the uh, he's the one person in the Bible who got the full revelation. I forget where it says this, but it says he has a full revelation of the gospel of grace, right, of what God's grace is. So when you read Apostle uh, Paul's teachings and his writings, the epistles, when you see when he uses the word grace, first of all, grace is in, for every epistle. Go read every single epistle. It, um, every single one that Paul writes, it's the uh, the first thing he says to people usually, or in the introduction, may, may the grace of our Lord be with you, right? He also says other things, may the, may the peace, may, you know, but it all, every time he always mentions grace at the beginning, at the end, it's such an important word. And a lot of people know the scripture that by grace through faith, you've been saved. They mm-hmm. get that, right? That it's by grace that you're saved. But then like, what does that mean after that? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Like Lean Paul in. says in in first Corinthians 13, he says that I am the the least of any of the apostles, he says, you know, because everyone knows what Paul's done. You know, mm-hmm. we know where he came from being Saul. We, mm-hmm. we know that he was killing Christians. He was persecuting like hardcore. But he says, but by grace, I am the greatest of them. Mm-hmm. But like so you see that like grace actually propelled Paul from being where he was to being to writing two two thirds of the New Testament. Like it was <laughs> it was the grace of God. And, and grace isn't this license to sin. He says in Romans six. Like, um, so does that mean now that we've been freed from sin, should we go on sinning? It says, of course not. Right. This is what your Bible says in Romans six. Mm-hmm. It actually says that um, it, it says that uh, you've been freed. I, I'm going to go to Romans six, actually, real quick. I put my Bible with me because I knew I need it mm-hmm. because, dude, here, if you have anything, go, go ahead. I'll find the scripture. It's just so it's so powerful. Is what yeah, it is. Find the scripture. And I wanted to kind of add to that, that one of the biggest verses that um that really stuck out to me right around the time I was getting saved. And uh, when I got baptized, my sister-in-law, Abigail, who's an artist, asked me what one of my favorite verses is. And uh, you'll see behind me this little um canvas right here. She made me a canvas. Um, and it's, I think it's in Corinthians where it talks about like, by the grace of God, I am what I am. Essentially, you know, yeah. that, that really propelled me into realizing that like, wow, like all the, everything that I've been blessed with up until this point that I didn't realize was all God's hand moving on my life to get me to this exact moment of salvation. 
And then from there, it's like he's going to be using me, not just for, not just to save me, but to use me for his glory. That's right. So that verse kind of really spoke to me in both paths as far as like where I was, where I was when I got saved and where I'm going through Christ. It, it, that's actually where that's where I was talking about, by the way. Um, mm-hmm. So right before that, I'm, let me just read that one first. Um, for the, for I am the least of the apostles, first Corinthians 15, uh, mm-hmm. who am not worthy to be called an apostle because I, I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. It's so powerful, man. Like it's, it is, it's not just, and I actually have that written in my Bible. It says this, it says what grace does. Because mm. grace is this beautiful thing that that a lot of people do understand for being saved. They understand what God's grace is. You know, uh, everyone knows, you know, John 3, 16, they, they, they think of God's grace in that sense. But then what I wrote down here, because this is the first time in the Bible, I want to say, I, I could be wrong on this, but it's the first time in the Bible where it actually says, um, it's like uses a verb, right? Like, like, like grace actually does this thing. Grace actually propels you forward, like you were saying. Mm-hmm. And so Romans 6, by the way, is foundational for that. It says this, for sin shall not have dominion over you. Why? Because you are not under law, but under grace. So when people say that grace is licensed to sin, grace is actually the thing that frees you from sin. Knowing yes. that you're forgiven, knowing that you're that you're actually a new creature, knowing that like like rather than, you know, when, once a caterpillar becomes a butterfly. OK, this is the thing I use in that thing I sent, you know, because it's such mm-hmm. a good picture. If the if the butterfly tries to go back down the mud on the ground and, you know, do caterpillar things. It's just not a caterpillar anymore. Like it can try to be one. It Uh, won't be able to enjoy it because it's a new creature. It's a mm -hmm. completely different being. And so what the best thing to do is to tell that caterpillar like, hey, I mean, that butterfly, you're not a cow anymore. You're a butterfly. You're a new Mm -hmm. creature in Christ. Uh, It says, what then? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey? You are the one slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or obedience leading to righteousness. So anyways, and it's not works, you know, you can't, mm-hmm. you can't earn your salvation. You couldn't earn it then when, when, you know, when you first got saved, you can't earn it now. It is all by grace, but grace, because it, anyways, I, I'll go on to one more thing and then I'll, I'll hand it back off because this is, this is such a huge part of the gospel that I think a lot of people miss because it's just too good to be true. They're mm-hmm. just thinking like, I know I got to do something to keep this salvation. I know I got to be, I know I got to be obedient. I know I got to be this. And, and, and what you're, what that's doing is subtly putting the, uh, focus back on you. Anytime the devil tries to like get the mirror pointed this way to make you look at yourself, you always just got to tell the devil, nope, that's my righteousness. God is my righteousness. Even in the old covenant, when they were presenting a lamb for sacrifice wow. for the atonement of sins, the, the minister, the priest didn't look at the person. Okay. This is really important. When, the, when someone, if I was, you know, holding my lamb, I, I walk up to, you know, for, for them to inspect my lamb. They don't look at me at all. The priest doesn't care about me. He knows I'm dirty. He knows I'm a sinner. He looks at my lamb. So in the mm-hmm. same way now, or my goat, you know, but the same way now we have the perfect sacrifice when, when they're looking at, when God's looking at us, he's all he sees is Christ, right? Once we're a new creature, all he sees is that like for righteousness, he sees Christ. Yeah, he, um, looks at, so they, he looks at us without wrinkle and without blemish. That's what without I'm blemish. Yeah, yeah, it, exactly. Because Christ was the perfect sacrifice. So it's not me. You know, it, 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 it isn't me. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. Boom. Mm-hmm. Right there. I can all I can go ahead and say I can't boast. You know, and mm-hmm. Paul even says, like, I even what I do is I boast, boast in my weaknesses in Christ. Yeah, because I'm boasting in Christ because it's all him. He's perfect in my weakness. So it, it's it, anyways, it takes away all like self-effort, self-righteousness. It takes away all the pride out of the gospel. Mm-hmm. And it just says, like, hey, Ooh, we're I just like focused that. on Christ. Right. It's it's Ooh. just. Yeah, it's good, man. The devil wants you to look at yourself. Right. And yeah. a lot of people would say when they're taking communion, make sure you reflect yourself. But Paul says, make sure to examine yourself to see if you're what. If you're in the faith, if you're mm. a believer of Jesus, Paul always points that camera lens or that mirror back to Christ. So, right. Dude, that's so big. good. I got it's the Holy big. Spirit when you were sharing that, dude, because it's just so profound and it's just so much truth just coming to the surface of like, we have to wrap our minds around that as believers. You know, so many people listen to this show that are still, I don't want to say like baby Christians, but still like new to the faith and growing in their sure. faith as I grow mine. And I, I'm all for that. But eventually Amen. we got to get to the place of being mature in faith and we got to get that meat. And I feel like this is the meat of it because yeah. this is something that 
will take us to the next level in our faith, but also give us an understanding to be able to help other people through that, especially when somebody has a preconceived notion of who Jesus is because of religion or because of man or because of the church or because of being burned by people. So this is just a perfect testament to be able to really communicate what the gospel is. And so much of that is represented in, as grace. So I truly love that you Good shared man. that with me in that in that clip because that really stuck out to me is like, man, we don't we don't talk about that enough. And even if we do, it is like we talked about a little bit watered down, a little bit misleading, a little bit like where do we go from here? And I love the the word obedience in this because it's a willingness to be obedient because once you understand the love of God, you know, which I feel like is overused in some sense, but also the the grace of God substantially, once you obey, that comes with blessings, that comes with with rewards, that comes with you understanding that those um commands and like your obedience is only for your benefit. It's only because God knows what's best for you. So when you're living in that obedience, you're doing right by him, but also you're doing right by you because you're walking in the way he has called you to walk, which is only going to uh, send more things your way and also just lead you on the path of uh, righteousness and holiness through Christ. That's good. Yeah, that, that's really good. And, and it's identity. Okay. So a lot of this is who you are. And once you're a new cre creation, a new creature in Christ, it is identity. So some people will say, well, if I could just go on sinning, then I will be still out in the world. I would still be partying. I would still be sleeping around. I would still be, you know, drinking alcohol. I would still be doing this. And I'm just thinking like, w when I read the Bible, I'm not reading it like, oh man, I don't get to do that stuff anymore. I'm like, man, that stuff led to death. That mm. stuff was death. It says the wages of sin is death. I mean, that stuff is just, I just don't want to. Like the Lord, it says he gives you the desires of your delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. And I'm thinking the desires that are in my heart now are not those things. Like wow. I have no desire to, you know, to, to go commit adultery. I have no desire to go to this. And, and I, I've heard that. I've heard ministers say, and I'm not like trying to be critical. What I'm trying to do is just like reveal actually the, the gospel of grace does lead to right um, thinking, right? Uh, right, right, right. Believing re leads to right living. So if you believe what like that sin is death, then you're not going to want to do it. And it's not like a condemning thing. It's not like, oh, but sin is so fun. God actually has such a better plan for you than that. You know, like if I went and I've heard minister, a big minister say like, well, I would just go off and keep doing what I was doing in the world. It's like you would lose your marriage. You would lose your ministry. You would lose the people like like, would you actually or you just, you know, because because people will try to make it a works thing, a, a law thing. Hey, make sure you make sure you are obedient now. You know, if you're not obedient, you'll lose your salvation. Or if you're not obedient, this will happen. But when you put someone under a law, and this is what the book of Galatians is all about, man, it's it's so important. It's, but when you put yourself under law, it says that the strength of sin is the law. So when someone is living under law, trying to be perfect, trying to be obedient, trying to do this and 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 um really like, you know, hammering that into people, it's actually usually those ministers end up with this huge sin in their life at some point. And we're like, whoa, how did that, how did that happen? That guy was such a godly guy. And it just, the, Paul says it, the strength of, of sin is the law, which is why when God first gave the law that day, uh, 3000 people disobeyed it and died. Right. Uh, if you look in Exodus, when, when God first gave the commandments, 3000 people died because they built like the golden calf. You know what I mean? Like they built the, the idol, the first commandment. He gave the first one. I'm, I'm the only God. And they immediately disobeyed it. It's crazy because we needed the law. The law's perfect, right? The law's not a bad thing. It is perfect. Um, and Christ fulfilled it. And Christ fulfilled it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Which means since we're our life is hidden in Christ, since we're, we're hidden in Christ, when we um, live as Christ lived on the earth, which is what we're, we have the power to do now with grace, that, and we understand our new identity with the Holy Spirit. We can actually walk as Christ walked. And when we do that, so one thing I always tell people, hey, if you love your wife like Christ loves the church, how could you possibly commit adultery, right? Like he, he didn't just do, give you the bare minimum of the law. Christ goes further, right? Mm -hmm. He doesn't say, um, he doesn't say don't. Issue. Yeah. yeah, it is. He, yeah, exactly. He doesn't say don't, uh, don't murder someone, all right? He doesn't say don't murder. What he says is lay down your life for those people. Right. It, it's it, it takes it a step further, actually. And that's only possible by grace. How would you encourage people to walk away from the sin that they feel like they have a stronghold to or that they feel like they need, for instance, like or or they feel that they can um kind of kind of toy with or like still have in their life. But, you know, yeah. maybe they can control it. How what would advice would you give for somebody to kind of, you know, break free of that? First, I would say, which I think most people that you're talking about are saved. 
But I would say, okay, first of all, are you saying that you giving given your life to the Lord? Was it a, an emotional experience in church or did you believe it in your heart? And that, that's not a condemning question. It's just like a, I do believe some people are a part of like a church group that aren't necessarily saved. You know mm. what I mean? So so first of all, is get saved because when you get saved and get baptized, it's not just um, an emotional experience or even like it, it's a spiritual one. It's a, yeah, you're actually, it's an actual thing happening when you're being uh, you're being buried with Christ and then raised in his resurrection. That's what baptism is. And it's mm -hmm. so powerful. Once I got baptized, my life changed. And I'm talking about like water baptism, like it, sin. Yeah. Anyways, I had sin in my life. Even when I was a Christian the first few years, I was I was under law. I was going. um yeah. Anyways, to, to a church that really preached the law and like, hey, do better, be this, do this. And sin just kept showing up in my life. And I was like, I really I knew I was born again. I really wanted to get that sin out. I wasn't like craving it. I was like hating it and hating myself because I still had it in my life. Mm. First thing was I got I got baptized, which was powerful. Bapti baptism is not just an outward expression of something. It's actually doing something in your life. It's because the, the, if you look at the book of Acts, uh, baptism was immediate. It wasn't like, hey, take this course first. Hey, you got to be a member first. It wasn't needed. It was like, there's water. I'm going to get baptized. You know, so yeah. so baptism is, is a big getting saved, getting baptized, and then the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. So Jesus says it's actually better that he goes to be with the Father so that we could have the comforter. All right. He mm -hmm. talks about this in the book of John. And, um, and so then if you don't have the Holy Spirit inside of you, that's what gives you power. And in this life, you know, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, I would I would say get filled with the Holy Spirit, go to your pastor, go to a minister who, you know, can anoint your head with oil oil and pray for you to have the Holy Spirit. And um, and, and they got to know who they are. So once you have that, anytime the devil tries to say, because the devil's talking to you in your head, it's spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. So anytime that you get a thought that says, like, I want to go, you know, cheat on my wife, I want to go, um, you know, do this, I want to look at pornography, I want to go drink alcohol, the devil is putting the first person narrative in your head making you think that it's your thought. But in reality, it's the devil's thought. And that's what we call spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. So what I tell people is like, um, just because a bird flies over your head, it doesn't mean that he has the uh, authority or the audacity to put a nest in your hair. Okay, just because thoughts are going through your 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 head, basically, and the devil's trying to put thoughts in there, just just the same way that God's trying to put thoughts in your head. You actually have authority with your with your mouth. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then also with your heart. So, so don't let that stuff come down to your mouth. Don't speak it because death and life is in the power of the tongue. And mm -hmm. then, and then it's in your heart. So that it's, it's really, I, the, the one word to sum it up is identity, knowing who you are in Christ, right? right? Once you know who you are, you're not going to want those things. And so I, I have met a lot of people that are struggling with sin and I just, and their, their first thing is I've been trying to do this. I've been trying to do this. Stop trying, stop trying to smoke cigarettes. Just know who you are. You don't need cigarettes. Your only addiction is Jesus. And you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, right. just, just speak destiny in life. Even when Paul was correcting in first Corinthians, they're sleeping with temple prostitutes, man. This is mm -hmm. not like light stuff. This is, this is big stuff. And Paul is saying, don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? Shouldn't Paul tell them like, Hey, you better stop or you're going to hell. Like, shouldn't Paul say something like that? You know, right. but he says, don't you know that your temples are body of the Holy spirit and they didn't deserve it. It's the same way that we didn't deserve it when Jesus died for us. So yeah, man, so, it is so, a great approach. So you ensure you encourage people to kind of rebuke it with their words as well as um, realize that they're being attacked by the enemy. Do you think that when Jesus was being tempted in Luke uh, in the wilderness, you yeah. think he, you think the devil was in, in his thoughts as well and like getting into his, into his first person narrative as you kind of described also. Oh, absolutely. I do believe it went through Jesus' head. That, that's what temptation is, right? Mm -hmm. It's the death. Because in order for Jesus to have responded to what the devil said to him, he had to have thought about it. And, and it doesn't mean Jesus sinned, right? So when you have a thought come to your head, it's not sin. It, it can't okay. be sin, right? Because mm -hmm. even Jesus had that. And I, I do believe that's what happened. So Jesus, but then what did Jesus say? He spoke with his mouth, it is written. So whenever the devil says, Hey, you're not good enough, you say, It is written. I am the righteousness of God in Christ mm -hmm. Jesus. You, you start speaking with your mouth the truth. Because people and then people will say like, well, because there's a difference between facts and truth, right? A fact might be that you used to sin in your past, right? The devil will try to bring facts to you and just say like, this is truth. But the truth is Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. So mm -hmm. when, 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 when the devil is trying to give you a fact or trying to give you something about your past or trying to, you know, put a temptation into you, you just speak the truth. And now Jesus was without sin. I, I, I mean, obviously, right? He had right. a perfect relationship. He was fully God. But um, yeah. He did. He spoke the word to the devil. He didn't even try to justify himself to the devil, right? Mm -hmm. He didn't say like, well, I promise on the son of God, I can prove it to you. None of it, man. He just right. said, you should not tempt the Lord your God. You know, he, he, he straight said, authority with, with the it's word. Authority. Yeah. yeah.
So, so that's why it's so important for us. And I've been kind of really appreciative about this in the last few se- in the last season or two about um, having the word of God, like on your heart. And I feel like that's why uh, it's, so we got, um, we got 10 minutes left on my 40 minute zoom, <laughs> zoom thing. Um, <laughs> I've upgraded. That's a new thing they've been doing on here is the 40 minute thing, but oh um, man, that's annoying. Wow. <laughs> but I, I, I love, I love this because, you know, having the new Testament on your heart, you know, and you can see like the people that are listening can see that you're, you're very knowledgeable of the word, you know, you're, you've been able to reference it in Galatians and Romans and John uh, on more than one occasion. Right. And that's why I feel like it's so important for at yes. least the new Testament, you know, and I've, I've, I've been very clean and open about this. I struggle with the old Testament a little bit because of, of the his, history and the old law and just the names, oh, yeah. and, you know, I have a hard time just kind of sitting through it and just kind of really like letting the Holy spirit illuminate what, what it's trying to tell me in there a lot of times. So I've really just felt like I've leaned into the new Testament in my ministry and, you know, I'm, I'm letting go and letting God kind of, you know, take, take that as is, as well as Proverbs and Psalms and all that. Um, but I do feel like it's so important to have the word on your heart because then you can be able to know the truth when you are getting fed those lies from the enemy or those facts, as you call them, about your past that yeah. is not a, a, in truth when once you accepted Christ and you became his and you declared him with your mouth as your Lord and Savior, right? So yeah. when you become that new creation, it's so important to have a new a new lens, a new uh, default setting, a new filter to where you decipher information from, especially when it comes to like Good. everything that's yeah. being you know broadcasted in front of us on the phones, on the screens. I mean, we had Biden's um, <laughs> speech last night, Soul of the Nation, and it's like this dark, red, eerie you know uh, press conference with 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 Marines behind him, and he's attacking you know seventy five million people that voted for Trump, saying he's um you know a fa- everybody's fascist that voted for him, and like a threat wow. to democracy, you know. So so clearly there's a lot of stuff going on right now in our country that is very, um, very weird, very sketchy, very out in the open of like what their agenda is as far as, you know, but they lie, they lie nonstop through their teeth. So how would you encourage people to, to really just move in a direction of making sure they're able to discern truth when, when, when fed so many lies, um, in, in our daily lives? That's a, that's a good one, man. Uh, this is something that I prayed for actually last year. I'll never forget this. Uh, we were having a, um, a church meeting, uh, evening church meeting, and, and we were talking about the gifts of the spirit. And one of the gifts of the spirit is the discerning of spirits. And mm-hmm. uh, we we said, you know, it says to eager um, to, to earnestly uh, covet or want the most helpful gifts. And so I actually asked the Lord that and I wrote it down on a piece of paper. So they, but, but writing down is really good a lot. So I wrote down on a piece of paper. I said, Lord, I want the discerning of spirits gifts. And here was the reason why I don't want to have to research everything. I was just honest with the Lord, man, because yeah, here's, here's, it's just not my that. personality. I'm not, <laughs> I don't have time for it, man. It's not like who I am. I'm not, the, I'm not an intellectual person who likes to go like research everything for hours and then understand it. I want to know right away, is this from the Lord or is it a different spirit? That's mm-hmm. just, and I was very honest with the Lord and I felt the Lord gave it to me that night. And ever since I can watch something for two minutes and then, and know right away, something's off about this. Even if I, and, and I'm not always a vocal about that, by the way, because, because, mm-hmm. you know, it's, if it's a minister, like I'm not going to attack a minister right away. I'm not going to, because it's not that the minister's um, off in his heart. It might just be that like he's teaching a little bit of law, old doctrine or something in, in his yeah. teaching. So, so I'm not always like, uh, I, and I don't attack other ministries. I'll never be in Jesus name. The kind sometimes, of person. Sometimes it's just for you, you're saying, right? And yes, it's just for exactly. your own information. Yeah. It, exactly. Because I want I want the most helpful gifts, right? That's what I want. I, I want to be able to lead my family, lead my church. I, that, that's what I want to be able to do. So um basically, yeah. It, anyways, saying that I asked for that gift and the Lord gave it to me. I felt it. So basically, Jesus says, You have not because you ask not. So I asked mm. for the gift of the Holy Spirit for the discerning of spirits. And by the way, the Lord will give it to anyone who asks. It's not, it's not that some are, you know, are, are ha- have this gift of prophecy and no one else can have it. That's what the Old Testament did. The Old Testament, you had certain prophets who had the Holy Spirit on them who were able to speak the word of God. Now you have the Holy Spirit in you. Okay. Mm-hmm. E- every Christian, every believer who, who accepts the Holy Spirit. Uh, through the baptism of fire has the Holy Spirit in them. So they can, you actually have all these things that are, um, you can read first Corinthians 12 and go through all the gifts. There's nine gifts, go through them and they're all available to you. So I wanted the gift of the turning of spirits. And like I said, I was being honest. I didn't want to have to research things. So when I'm, mm-hmm. and here's the, to, to be honest, I'll go even further, man. I don't get into politics anymore. I don't watch, I don't spend time yeah. on it. And I used to spend so much time on it. You and I talked a lot about this when we first met too, about mm-hmm. politics and stuff. And I'm not saying like that there's no place for it in, in, in our daily walks, but I knew it wasn't helpful for me, my family, my church. It, it was actually a distraction, a huge distraction. All right. Mm-hmm. Because as the high priest goes, so goes the nation. 
So mm. I'm actually more when I when when the Bible says to pray for your leaders, I start praying for um like you know locally uh, my, my lead pastors. I start yes. praying, and, and it brings unity. John 17 talks about Jesus' prayer for us is people would know us by our unity. They would be able to see just as I and the Father are one, you guys will be one with mm-hmm. me so we're the we're the bride of christ man Pe- when people see that you and i are connected even though we're going to different churches even though that we're you know we're in, we're in different walks of life in different places they're it's going to encourage faith to people just as jesus and the father are one you and i are the are the body of christ right, right. And, and that's going to bring faith to people so th- anyways I, I would say d- ask for that gift i really encourage people to ask for that gift ask for the discern the gift of the discerning of spirits to know right away is this of god not that it's completely wrong but is it what god wants for me is because, you know, man, I used to do conspiracy theories. I told you this about, too. I mean, if if the earth is flat or if it's not flat, does it help me and my family to know those things? You know, Correct, it says yeah. in a, a Deuteronomy uh, 29, 29, one of my favorite scriptures, uh, it talks about that we are not responsible, I'll paraphrase, for the mysteries of God. We're mm. responsible for the things that God has revealed. OK, so if if. But yeah, you know, you know, you know what I mean. Like, like if there's a mystery of God, and people will spend so much time on that, on that thing, the research and everything that includes that. Anyways, I, I'll summarize right there. But just ask for the discerning of spirits, the gift of discerning of spirits, and then know right away: is this from God or is it not? So, Absolutely. And I love that you said that you ask God for it personally. And I feel like a lot of times, you know, I'll, I'll share one thing and I'll share the second thing. A lot of times I'll be in the season of praying and I just feel so blessed that I feel like I'm almost like hesitant to ask for anything else. I'm so like uh, grateful of all he's already done and all he's already provided in our, in our lives. And I'm just kind of like repraising him and re, you know, reiterating my appreciation for him. But um, I do feel like we maybe um, and maybe I can uh, say this as well, that Uh, I've struggled to like pray for spiritual things almost sometimes as far as like, give me like, Lord, I would love to have this gift and whatnot. I would, I would love to be, you know, like on, on, on this path when it comes to ministry, you know, kind of praying into like the spiritual faith, faith aspect of like what you want him to reveal to you or what you want him to, to do in your, in your journey and stuff like that in your walk. So do you feel like a lot of Christians are kind of hesitant to pray for, for deeper spiritual things because of um, what did you say? It's a lack of desire. Would you say it's a fear? Would you say it's just an unknowing that we should be praying into those things? I think it's a fear of spiritual pride, right? People, mm. some, sometimes people eat, eat, we'll take a hard case right now. People don't want to ask for money from the Lord, even though the Lord's will is for you to be prosperous in every way, not just money, not just spiritually, but every way, right? John, uh, when John's writing to Gaius, he says, beloved, I pray that you are prospering in your health and in your finances, just as your soul prospers. You know, it, it's just like, that is the Lord's will for us. But people are afraid to ask for that because they don't want to have spiritual pride in their own heart. And then I would come right back at him with that first thing I told you about identity. No, you actually have the mind of Christ. Okay. And then the Lord's given you a new heart. So you're, your, your desires are pure. The Lord wants you to have money so you can be a blessing. All right. Honest, you don't have to yeah. get into this thing. Like, is it going to be my God? Is it not going to be my God? The same with the discerning of spirits. You'll know the Lord will actually reveal that to you. If it's becoming a God in your life or something or, or I don't, and then, and then you'll, he'll prompt you to give it all away. Right. right. Like Robert Morris is a pastor in, in, uh, in, in South Lake. He, he, I don't know if he was 10. struggling with that, but he gave his whole ministry away, man. Hundreds mm-hmm. of thousands of dollars of their building of everything. He gave it all away. And the Lord blessed him with this huge building now. And he's walking in crazy financial prosperity. But people don't look at how we got there. He gave everything away, right? The Lord's worship. If you sow you abundantly, you will reap abundantly. You will have an abundant harvest. And he did. Like people said, like, why um, why why, why doesn't this minister give everything away? And this one minister I, I follow, Evangelist Jonathan Shuttlesworth, he said, I tried to. Right. I tried to give it all away. It just keeps coming back to me. You know what I mean? So, yeah, uh, that's, that's a so hard powerful. case, by the way. Money's a hard case, I believe. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I've, I've really I'll wrap it up with this because we have a minute left. But yeah, I've really experienced that as well as when when I did, you know, start falling into the path of like, you know, um, serving money more than God. He took it away. And then it was kind of like a spiritual lesson. He, he was disciplining me. Right. He was you know, get, yeah. getting me refocused on him, writing for Amen. him instead of writing for, for money, you know, and it really just shifted my heart back into him, back into his goodness and his grace. So and then he started pouring out back back into me once I re- once I disconnected my love for money. It was more back focused yeah. on him. He kind of had to teach me that to be able to get me to the place where we're at now, where everything just seems to be flowing and outpouring in a big way. So Judah, you're the man. I truly appreciate having you on. We yes. definitely got to do this again. Uh, blessings to you and your family, man. I truly appreciate you being here and asking to be on the show and um, sending me that clip that you did. Anytime. It was powerful.
anytime. I really appreciate it. By the way, this ministry is good. I like birds. It's so good. Zach Wright has such a huge heart for you guys. Zach, um, man, I love you. Thank you. I love you, man. All right, man. Take care. Much love to you. And uh, I'll let you know when we're dropping the episode. All right, brother? All right. Thanks, brother. Bye. Right, cheers.